Hi, Zizrin here, and welcome to another Path of Exile University. Uh, I apologize for not wearing a suit, crippling laziness, and didn't sleep a lot. But today we are going to do choosing your build. We have the upcoming 3.17 league start, and a lot of people don't know how to choose a league starter. And obviously we will be posting a lot of league starters on YouTube, but let's talk a little bit about how to choose your build. So first off, are all builds equal? No, not really. There's a lot of different types of builds and for solo play, they split into three categories. You have boss killers, league starters, and you have speed farmers or also MF builds. And we're gonna come cover the most common build styles and we're gonna focus on league starters in this talk. And that is the most important build. And basically a league starter is a build that like gets you off to a really good start. And um, once you get to a certain point in the game, you can use one character for everything. And uh, there are some builds that really, really shine for this aspect. For party plays, there are other ways to play, but we're not going to cover that in this. Elite starter, 0% currency, 0% gear, 10% luck, and 90% new league hype. It's basically the least starter you you don't want to rely on rng you don't want to say like have impulsa on your league starter right you don't want to have any item that on trade league might end up being 30 to 200 chaos and you don't want something that for solo cell fund would be maybe unobtainable so a league starter is generally supposed to be something you can kill at least most things in the game on um maybe some things that league starters maybe don't do is maybe like 30 waves to malachrom or maybe like the feared and stuff like that but generally a league starter should be able to kill everything like maven awakener etc pretty easily and farm things for your other build they don't necessarily need to be amazing at it but they need to get your currency going they need to be cheap and come online really fast um they're usually not new skills sometimes we will have league starters for new skills and generally that is only done when there's very clear one-to-one -one backup. So, for example, whenever, you know, maybe Blade Blast has the same tags as a new skill. So, like, okay, well, the new skill is shit. We're going to switch back to Blade Blast. That, that is when we make League Starters for new skills. And there are no new skills in the upcoming 3.17. Uh, we are just, um, we're getting some buffs and nerfs on other skills. Um, and then bossing and farming builds, that's more like... You make a specialized one like maybe especially for hardcore you will have a specialized one for particular bosses or you will make a magic find build that maybe doesn't have that much life maybe like for software three or four k life uh, or even less and and just like shit tons of magic find just meant to make money but they require a lot of things to get going so yeah it's uh it's important that your league starter just comes online very fast it needs to be reliable it's not necessarily very fast uh, we did have some league starters last day for example poison concoction they weren't like the most amazing bosters they could kill maven and awakener and everything but they were really fast mappers so there are different types of league starters too um very often these end up being spell builds the reason for that is attack builds are getting buffed a lot this league however attack builds still have the problem as for a new player you might struggle a little bit with how do i scale this build like how do i get it going where do i get the damage from and Already as a new player, you're already struggling with socket pressure and links, and now you have to add on top of all that that you actually need good items, like for example a weapon with flat fizz and percentage fizz. So it's um it's a little bit of a problem. So spells are very different in that regard, with that you get a large amount of damage from leveling up. So if you're feeling like you're getting behind on levels. You can just overlevel in an area. And very often, if something hasn't been nerfed, a lot of people prefer comfort pick. So for example, Essence Strain is a good example of that for a lot of people. It's not necessarily the strongest build anymore. It's, it's not even particularly very strong, but it comes online very fast. And for a lot of people, they're so used to playing it and they know exactly how it works. And Sometimes just playing a build you're very familiar with can be stronger than playing a slightly stronger build that you are kind of lost on. Um, let's see. 
So yeah, you don't want it to be expensive. You don't want it to be fully unique. You don't want it to be complicated. You like you want to be fairly basic here. And while it may seem that a league starter seems like a counterintuitive way to play the game, you just don't have anything when you start. You want it to come online like all my league starters. You'll notice in the path of building in the in the gear configuration that it's basically no unique. It is or all, all just random rares. And you'll see me and Lee start. I basically hit maps with white items with a crafted stat on them. Very often we'll have like very basic rares. So what about choosing a league starter? See, this is a little problematic because A, there are people that make literally dog shit videos. Um, for example, lastly, we saw somebody that had made a arc guide where they were linking arc with faster attack. Now, at that point, you should obviously not be making videos for other people to follow when you don't know how the basic game functions. That's really, really bad and can end up ruining someone else's entire game experience. Right? And there have been other content creators too that have maybe been not entirely like it's it's very you got to be very very careful with who you pick from generally you will get good recommendations from other players whether it's on reddit um obviously like most of like the large path of exile creators there's not really been any large creator fucking up build right uh it's mostly been more like niche things and and some youtubers that will something we see a lot is you've got to be careful about when the video is uploaded. There will be league starter guides going up a week or two before now. That'll be like 3.17 league starter where they haven't seen the patch notes and they don't really know if the build is going to work. So you gotta, um, you got to be careful. Um, I would say we have very, very strong uh, league starters, probably the best ones. They're very laid out, very easy to follow for new players and walk you through the entire step by step process. So it's a very, very safe pick and generally have backup options. We also do a lot of build collabs with other creators to try to promote other people. So they're fairly safe to follow and you're going to have a good time pretty much no matter what. And the important thing when following someone's build, make sure it's a content creator where you can ask them for help if something goes wrong. That's a really good thing by following a guide by most of the known creators is that if something goes wrong, you can go into their chat and be like, hey, am I doing something wrong? And they'll hopefully help you out. At least we do. So that's pretty important. Um, but be careful. There is, uh, for more veteran players, you can use PoE Ninja and just search for a build and just copy someone's skill tree and stuff like that. That does require you to have a lot of knowledge on why things are working and how. Um, I, would, uh, I would say to avoid the Path of Exile build forums. The reason for that is that there are so many people there that will just copy layouts from other people so it'll look like a really really solid build and it'll be a very very bad build guide and the poe forums like you can if you ever got a negative reply on your build guide you can just report them for slander and ggd will remove the negative comment so there will never be any negative comments in build guides. so make sure you be a little bit careful there are good builds on the poe forums but it's hard to tell them apart for a new player from good ones Generally, especially if you're a new player, you do want it to be very, very handholdy and step by step. Um, and uh, it'll sort of very often it'll tell you in the guide what it's for, whether it's just a league starter, if it'll take you everywhere. Um, but yeah, so ask other people who they would recommend is uh, is very, very important. So. Everything for League Starters, it's going to be a bit of a guess. Um, sometimes things are different on paper than um, how it turns out in practice. Namely, Explosive Arrow was uh, something that happened for us. Uh, Explosive Arrow looked really, really good on paper. Everybody, like, I think Mathel, Rise, Noogie, and loads of other people were League Starting it. It looked amazing. And I made a League Starter guide for it. And it ended up being most people's worst experience they've ever had on Path of Exile. It just ended up not being good in practice at all. It was a very theoretical build. Um, and Explosive Arrow sadly didn't have a backup. So it's changed the entire way where we make League Starters. We always make sure that either we know that it's solid and it's been played. Or uh, we have a backup. For example, with Cracklands, we had a very one-to-one -one change to Arc or Ball Lightning. So nobody ended up being stuck on a build. So... 
we always make sure that there are backups or that we know for sure that the build is solid um but you know you never really fully know until you play with the updated balance and sometimes they do change things mid league like uh in, in terms of buffs they generally never nerf mid league unless it's a bug fix so uh here's this sometimes whole playstyles get nerfed or buffed bringing a new meta and that is happening this league bows are getting massively buffed as well as self casting and we have trigger gems being nerfed so turning a spell into a trap or a totem for example is getting slightly nerfed so comparatively self casting is going to be a lot stronger this league uh dot builds are pretty much getting untouched so they will be pretty much the same power they were last league but they might be relatively weaker to self casting so, for example, Essence Strain should still work if that's a comfort pick for you, but it's definitely not going to be the strongest build. Uh, Champion Toxic Rain should also be another thing that's strong. Spells Repression is absolutely busted, did not get touched at all. I was expecting them to nerf it down to somewhere between 30 to 40% uh, instead of uh, up to 55%. So, Spells Repression is insane, and you're going to see most builds are going to have that as one of their early, um, early choice. And Detonate Dead is still going to be usable. Most of the POBs have gone from like 4 million damage to like 1.2 or 1.8. Um, but DD is most likely not going to be something you feel forced to play. Which if it didn't get nerfed, you probably would for a lot of people as a league starter. <clears throat> so for gearing the starter, again, it's very important here that you are not relying on uniques. And if you are relying on uniques or maybe like say you really want to quill rain, then you really want to play trade league because you're not going to get that early. Um, and then sometimes we'll see league starters that it'll be like, they'll be showcasing them with like elevated gear or like awakened gear. And it's like, you know, you really want to make sure you can see the build work on little gear. That's what makes it very strong. Uh, we do have a crafting guide coming after this PO uni. It's going to be like a practical crafting. I think that's tomorrow. And, uh, yeah, we have like harvest essences fossils and we have the new crafting orbs as well so make sure you check that out so whenever we say no gear it basically means just life and res we just want to res cap and especially for your league start it's very important to remember that you can use your crafting bench on a white item it'll turn blue and it'll have the resist on it because very often you'll wear a random for a new player you'll very rarely uh, or very often wear like a belt let's say with like seven strength 13 life no no resist or maybe six fire res and you're just like oh well i can't craft on this um and that's actually not worth it you can actually just grab a white item and craft on it and then you have up to a 20 res so you can basically resist cap just by just by crafting on white gear so yeah it's pretty good and uh you care more about socket pressure early you want to have basic fast rolls as well so for example instant or bubbling on a life flask is very big especially on hardcore early on you generally never in path of exile die like slowly over time you usually just get clapped um or you get burst down and as far as jewels we generally just assume like one stack early on one or two now if you are struggling with gear and stuff while leveling, there's a couple of really, really nice farm spots. Um, you have the Chamber of Innocence before Innocence. Very often people farm here to like fairly high. You can get like easily level 45, 48. And that's very, very nice because the rest of the game then just becomes so... Like you grind that really fast and it becomes just really, really great. Um, so it's a good way to farm up and get res. Now, do remember, you lose 30% resist at Kitava Act 5 and again in Act 10. It's never 15. Sometimes after uh, killing, we'll have new players be like, Oh yeah, I lost resist and I wasn't prepared for it. But you're never like, you're never surprised. It's not sometimes 1%, sometimes 30. Um, so you want to make sure that you are prepared for that rest penalty before. Like, you want to be proactive. So um, that's very, very important. And again, like Blood Aqueduct, Harbor Bridge... And Chamber of Innocence are like three leveling spots. Uh, Blood Aqueduct is good if you feel like you are going to farm out a Tabula. If not, I do prefer Harbor Bridge. It gives you, I think it's tier three map card for divination cards. And um, it also just has 
better density if you can clear the side platform. Blood Aqueduct can be slightly rippy as well if you're ever playing like dangerous privately. So, total you need 405 LE rest to get 75 at all, and that's um, just from crafting. You can craft 100 and. Sorry. <clears throat> Just from one one suffix crafting, you can get 180 with the weakest craft. So 25 rest per slot plus crafted modifiers only. It's very, very easy to risk out once you start using the crafting bench. Um, you can craft life as well. That's pretty good on jewelry. You can easily get 20 to 40 life on jewels. And um, there are some things that are really, really big for starters. For example, if you're playing a spellcaster, if you sell a white magic or rare ring, with one alteration and a magic wand, then you will get like, you know, fire damage to spells, cold damage to spells, and that's a huge way to boost damage and, and make the end game or early game way more accessible for yourself, which is uh, obviously for a spellcaster. There are other recipes as well. So, um, when you are upgrading to early end game, that means you need to generally farm low tier maps, and on hardcore, you generally stay in low tier maps for a little bit longer. I generally get like 5, 6k life before leaving low tier maps and I feel like I want like a 5 link or a 6 link. We have a couple of videos like explaining how to easily get a 6 thing. It's going to be a lot harder than last thing because we don't have the tainted fusings anymore. But um, sadly we have lost those. A lot of people like them but there are still loads and loads of ways to get to generic 6 thing. Getting a specific one like you know an influence chest that you crafted on or a unique chest that you really need is... Um, is a lot harder but we have loads of ways in a youtube video where we show easy ways to get a 60. Uh, you also really want spell suppression. Spell suppression gets incredibly strong once you get 100%. You really notice the difference between 90 and 100. It's because sometimes when the hits get through, it's, if it's a big one, it's crazy. Chaos Rest is uh, mostly important once you start fighting Chaos Bosses. There isn't that much like generic content that does Chaos Damage, but they are adding more as you know the game progresses. So it is starting to be more important. It traditionally was, you know, you could just play on minus 60 and be fine. But then you also want to keep scaling up your damage. Flash rolls become very important. There is a mod on flash that a lot of people thought was going to get nerfed for this league. It's called Flagellant. Can't remember, but it's basically gain flash charges when hit. And it basically allows for flash uptime on bosses and basically permanent flash while mapping um so it's, it's insane and for for um pathfinder specifically you can basically be hit to me because you can do you gain life whenever a flask is used it's insane they're very very important Flasks are honestly jewels and flasks are the number one things that new players ignore that they really shouldn't be and early end game on our guides is normally accessible very very easily it's just you know basic start of mapping gear and very often that's the sort of things that you're able to do the basic bosses with like shaper maven etc um these traditionally don't need that much as long as you do have like a lot of knowledge on how the boss works if you want to like avoid the boss mechanics that's when you end up wanting and needing like a really min max build with high damage and just bursting it down for example uber Aziri traditionally is killed by a lot of people not by you know outplaying the fight but just by bursting it down so what about when you're done with your starter you've played your starter you have whatever your goal was maybe you have one x maybe you have 10 maybe you have a hundred you've farmed up some gold far, 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 hold, farmed up some gear do you want a buster do you want a speedy mapper do you want an omni build that does everything you want a deep delver lab runner heist runner and for a lot of people things like lab runner ends up being their first or second build where you can end up maybe doing content that a lot of people don't enjoy and you get a shit ton of money for doing it shit ton of axles um omni builds are generally easier on software because it's a lot easier on software to maybe sacrifice one or two aspects of defense whereas on hardcore you really need to prepare for everything and there will end up being very few omni builds on hardcore and you end up with just a very large currency sink um and for a hardcore build yeah there it's it's rough 
It's breath. And Omni build, again, that's a build that can do anything. And in our guys, we generally have like super end game gear and um, everything should be step by step, including cluster jewels, everything. And I will show you. So we don't have any new league starter guides right now. Well, let's say we search for Zizzer and Toxic Rain. And then this was a collab I did with uh, Darky. And then you go here and you hear it there's the path of building link then you open a path of building when i know a lot of people don't like third party tools but path of building is basically not really third party anymore it's basically mandatory to play path of excel you click import from website here click in the website link click import it'll say code is valid and boom now this is an old build guide obviously i just wanted to demonstrate how you import there are other ways as well <coughs> So for example, maybe I'm league starting something that I don't have a guide for, or I don't have an updated guide for, or maybe I'm just changing something underway. You can go here and just click on import export build, and you can just write in my name here, Cicero. Then you can click start, and then, well, you want to search for the specific league because they have like 150 characters, but let's say here, Soul Self on Scourge Hardcore, and then you just click import on these two buttons. And then you can see the build I'm playing, right? This is always open. You can do this for any creator. I don't think any creator has their stuff hidden. So you can just search uh, and be like, what's Mathel's name? Oh, it's just Mathel. So here we can go like, okay, well, let's look at Mathel's grudge. There's a no time limit left. This is open and you can just look. Now, this is really, really useful for slightly more experienced players. Obviously, if you're a new player, you do still want a a super you know actual build guide um but it's really really good to be able to do that so we can show again a little bit and explain so in my build guides we do a step by step because very often a build guide will just be like here's the end game tree have fun um whereas we do step by step so you can like look here and then it shows when you take ascendancy points as well which one you take first and then we also have in the skill tree we have that here's what you're leveling with here's from level 33 here's from level 45 so you get to get a lot of hand holding there will be loads of notes answering questions and uh we have like different sets of item gear so here we have like early game. You can see, as I said in the video earlier, um, it's only rare items in the main game. Oh my God, we have a unique item. And in the like end game, we have two unique items. This one obviously being chased. Um, so it's, it's very, very good. This is why I would like to say that my build guides are the best um, because we do try to make sure that you don't get lost along the way and every step is accounted for. They're very easy to follow for new players. So yeah, very heavily recommend them. But either way, um, thank God. Do we have any questions? Do we have any questions? So humble. Yeah, I just want to help people. They're good. Like, you have a good experience if you follow the guides. Any questions about this? Do you go back and update guides? No, I do not. I would not follow old guides. I do not recommend following old guides. What are the Omni build candidates for trade software? You know, Explosive Arrow Totem actually looks really good. That actually be, might be one of the strongest builds. But we're going to have a lot of League starters out soon. What are some examples of solid mappers? Honestly, I haven't theory crafted enough this day. We're going to be doing that today and tomorrow, and then we're going to start pumping out uh, build guides.
Are you making these starters for specifically Trade League? So all the starters assume that you can play solo cell phone and be fine on that. If not, we will say in the start of the build guide that it needs things that are trade. Who are your best guide creators? There's so many good and solid ones. Um, there's a little bit different in level whether you're new. Um, but like, for example, like me, Nugi, Mathol, uh, Enki, and there's a, there's a bunch of people that are really good for like new, new people. And then sometimes you have, I'd say slightly more advanced ones like Ru, uh, Jungron, and Alkaiser. They don't necessarily make like super handholdy builds, but they'll be really, really strong. But there are so many. There's so many. Lily's great, yep. Yeah. You didn't show the note section, we did. Either way, we'll end the lesson here in the YouTube video. If you're watching on YouTube, thank you so much. Feel free to drop drop by my Twitch channel and ask any questions. And tell me if you like the video, but more importantly, try to die less than I do. <laughs>